Okay, so we were saying that there's no quiz or test this week while y'all are out. Um, agenda should be on your, your desk. Okay, so a little tiny preview that I gave them while y'all were out is I said what we're going to talk about today and in the upcoming lessons is I'm going to give you... No, I'm going to... You'll have to get him later. Sorry. Um, I'm going to give you a derivative and you're going to tell me what function I started with. So it's like our brains are going in reverse. Okay, so start off. If you knew that the derivative was 2x, could you tell me what f of x was? Just put your brain in reverse. If my derivative is 2x, what did I start with? x squared. Okay, what about... If I said the derivative is e to the x, it would just be e to the x. What if I said my derivative is 1 over x? I started with natural log of x. Okay, so we've done derivatives and derivatives and derivatives. So now this whole chapter is going to deal with, guess what we call them? Antiderivatives working backwards. It is so much fun. Okay, so when we work backwards from a derivative to find the original function, we are finding the antiderivative. This is also called the integral. The process of finding the integral is called integrating. This symbol means to integrate a function and find its antiderivative. So, you know how we used prime or dy dx that said, hey, find the derivative. Now this means, hey, find the antiderivative. So it means this is a derivative. What did I start with? Um, does anybody recognize that symbol on any dinnerware at a restaurant that you frequent? Waffle House. Think about a Waffle House plate. It's got those little things all around the edge. Uh, it does. Every time I go to Waffle House, I think of it. Every time. Next time you go, look. Yep, you look. Now you'll never, you'll never see Waffle House plates again the same way. Okay, so now we're doing derivatives. What is the derivative of 3x squared plus 4x? 6x plus 4. What is this derivative? Oh. What is this one? Okay, but were they the same function? Clearly not. What was different? What do we call that thing? There's a 0 here. There's an 8 here. There's a negative 235 here. What do we call that? The constant. So the only way that they differed was with the constant, okay? But then we ended up with the same derivative because what's the derivative of a constant? Zero. So it didn't matter what number was or wasn't tacked on to the end there. The derivative of all of those would be zero. Therefore, we got the same um, derivative. Okay, so you can see from the above functions that any function of this format, 3x squared, Mitchell, plus 4x, plus a constant, which is a number, would have the same exact derivative. You look like you're in la-la land. Okay, sorry. So plus a constant, the derivative of that constant is going to be zero. So because all of those constants sort of disappear with the derivative, that's why we ended up with the same derivative. So when finding the antiderivative or integral, of this derivative, we say that the initial function was 3x squared plus 4x plus c, which just means, hey, there could have been a number there. Might not know what it is, but we're going to just account for some number, and the number might have been zero. But we put that plus c on there, meaning just maybe there was a number there, but when we took the derivative, then it goes away. Okay, so here is a symbol and this whole setup that we're going to be using here. So this, it's actually an elongated S 
is what it was initially designed as. So that's called the integral sine. Here's a function. Function is the integrand. And then dx tells us what variable we're integrating with respect to. So for example, what if I said find the integral of 3? That means find the antiderivative of 3. Okay, what is it? Okay, maybe it was 3t. Maybe it was 3w. Maybe it was 3g. So this x on the dx tells us what variable was used. So that would be 3x. And then I would say, you know what, there could have been a constant there. So if it was integrate 3dt, then my function would be 3t plus a constant. So that's what that variable of integration means. If you have just a number, it's telling you what variable was used. Okay? All right, so the when you see this integrand, think of it as giving you instructions. Find the antiderivative. Just like when you see f prime of x, it's giving you directions. Find the derivative. Okay, so let's find the antiderivatives of these six here. Okay, so uh, I just kind of gave away a and b. What would the antiderivative of a be? 8x plus a constant. What about go over to the right to be? 8t plus a constant. Because the derivative of any number is zero, so it's not going to show up in the derivative. So I'm just saying, you know what, there could have been a number there. I don't know. And we're actually going to work some problems soon where we find out what that number was. We just have to have a little more information than what we have here. Okay, all right, so think a little bit harder. If my derivative is 3x squared, what did I start with? x cubed. Tell me what you your thought process was there. Did what now? So move the 3 up. What happened to the coefficient of 3? Okay. All right. Let's, I'm going to jump. No, I'm not going to jump. Let's do D. I'll go in order. Um, derivative, I'm sorry, derivative is e to the x minus 3. What is the antiderivative? Just go along each term. Andrew, what's the antiderivative of e to the x? Uh-huh. What's the antiderivative of negative 3? Uh-huh. And there could have been a constant. There we go. All right, 1 over x, what's that antiderivative? What did we start with there? Natural log of x plus x squared plus maybe a number. Okay, 5x, what did we start with? X Touch harder. Okay, all right. So what she said is you had to start with an x squared if we ended with an x, right? Because we subtract one from the exponent. Oh, okay. I'm going to write your 2.5 as an improper fraction like that. Okay, and the reason I'm going to write it like that is because you can kind of see if I bring that 2 down, it cancels, and it leaves that 5. Okay, what is the antiderivative of 3e to the x? 3e to the x, and then we could have had a constant. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want you to look at, let's keep going, then, then we'll worry about this rule that we can make. What about x to the 4? Think about this the way you thought about f.
So if we ended up with an x to the 4, what do we have to start with? x to the, okay, now think about the coefficient and what happened to it. 1 fifth x to the 5th. Now, you could say x to the 5 over 5. I, I just kind of prefer having that 1 fifth out front. Okay, look at these two right here. Can you come up with a rule for me? Like, tell me some systematic way to figure those out each time. Yes? The beginning exponent? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's... Let's test that out. If I have a 5x, you know that that new exponent has to be a 2, or we'll call it original exponent, the OE, has to be a 2. But then this coefficient is just 5 over that new exponent. Okay, did it work down here? New exponent has to be a 5, or original exponent, and then this coefficient becomes 1 over the new exponent. And that is the rule that we'll use. So it's the exact opposite of what we've been doing. We brought down the exponent, multiplied it, and subtracted one. Now we're going to add one to the exponent and divide by it. So exactly opposite, which makes sense because these are inverse operations. Okay, so now let's put it to the test. You're going to get so good at these fractions. If I add one to one half, what do I get? One and a half, but let's stick with an improper fraction. What would that be? Three over two. Okay, so I know that the exponent has to be three over two. That's one plus a half. But now the new exponent, remember what we just said, it'd be this coefficient divided by new exponent. So my coefficient was a one, and I'm going to divide it by new exponent. Okay, I'm not going to leave it a fraction within a fraction. What does that simplify to? Two-thirds. Okay, so let's test it. You should never miss these because you should be able to take the derivative and test it. So if I took this derivative, I would bring three halves down in front. Well, three over two times two over three, those both cancel and give me one. And then I would subtract 1 from that exponent and get the 1 half. Checks out. Okay, what about 3x? Use the rule. What does the new exponent become? I need a what? x squared, 2. And the coefficient is 3 over new exponent. So you're dividing by the exponent instead of multiplying, just the opposite of what we did. So if I took this derivative, I would bring the 2 down in front. It would cancel and leave 3x to the positive one. Okay, what am I going to do with cube root of x? Change it to x to the one third. Okay, so I have not taken the antiderivative. Now I'm going to do that. So add 1 to 1 third. Four thirds. <clears throat> so I said you're going to get good at that. So it's 1 plus 1 third, which is 3 thirds plus 1 third, which is 4 thirds. Okay, so new exponent becomes 4 thirds. But coefficient is 1 over 4 thirds. What is 1 over 4 thirds? 3 over 4. x to the 4 thirds plus c. <clears throat> okay, so imagine taking the derivative. 4 thirds would come down in front. The 4 and the 3 cancel, giving me 1 x to the 1 third. All right, what would you do with this one? Change it 
change it. Just like this became x to the one-third, this would become x to the negative three because it was in the denominator. So I can bring it up top, change the sign of the exponent. Okay, so let's keep our same rule. Add one to the exponent. Be careful. What is negative three plus one? Negative two. And then x uh, coefficient is 1 over new exponent, negative 1 half. So does that work? If I bring negative 2 down and multiply it by negative 1 half, that gives me 1. And then I subtract 1 from the exponent, I get negative 3. So that does work. What's another way that I could write this? Negative 1 half x to the negative 2. What, Madison? Not square root. It'd be square root if it was raised to the one half. These are so confusing. Yeah, we just move the x squared to the bottom. And then the two would still be down there. I would probably be tempted to put that negative up, this negative up top. You could leave it on the bottom as well. Let's see. So those are the same things. Question? <clears throat> okay, so that general rule, we just talked about that. Um, add 1 to the exponent, divide by new exponent. But let's write that down. Add 1 to the exponent. Divide by new exponent. So that was the rule, that power rule that we were using. Okay. All right. So you guys have already figured all of these out except maybe the fourth one. So we already talked about natural log. Um, notice that if it's 1 over x, they're putting an absolute value around the x. That's... Mm, we can do that. It's not 100% used all the time. But it's just that you can't take the logarithm of a negative number. So that absolute value is ensuring that you're not trying to do that. Okay, let's, let's look at this one down here. This is the only one that we haven't had a problem with. Let's say that my function is um, e to the 3x. Okay, what is the derivative? Now, I'm not doing an antiderivative. Derivative. What would it be? 3e to the 3x, because I need the e to the 3x, but then I have to multiply by the derivative of 3x, which puts a coefficient out there. Okay, so keep that in mind. What is the antiderivative of e to the x? e to the x. Okay, what is the antiderivative of... Um, 3e to the x. Hmm? 3e to the x. Okay, what is the antiderivative of e to the 3x? It's got to have e to the 3x in it. But if it's just that, it should have had a 3 in front of it and it doesn't. Madison, what did you say? Yeah, I've got to have one third e to the 3x. Okay, so why is that? Back here, remember we did derivative of e to the 3x is 3e to the 3x. And I see an e to the 3x, but there's not a 3 there. So if the 3 isn't there, it means we must have had a 1 -third that multiplied it that made it become a 1. So here is the rule for this one. Derivative of e to the ax 
is e to the ax, but 1 over a. So a was our 3 that we just used. Okay, so if I had um, antiderivative of e to the 8x, then that would be, got my little dx there, then that would be e to the 8x, but then 1 over 8 plus c. Because if I took this derivative, it would be 1 eighth e to the 8x times 8, and 8 times 1 eighth becomes the coefficient of 1. Okay, what if, let me squeeze one more in here, what if I had the antiderivative of 2e to the 5x? So I'm going to have 2e to the 5x, but then I have to do that 1 over 5, so it ends up being like that. 2 fifths e to the 5x. Okay, let's take the derivative of that. So let's do the reverse. If my function is 2 fifths e to the 5x, okay, and I took the derivative of it, I would have 2 fifths e to the 5x times derivative of exponent, which is 5, which ends up canceling with that. So I end up with 2e to the 5x. Okay. All right, so let's try a few more. Um, did that one. Okay. Let's jump down to example four here. All right, so e to the 4x. What's my antiderivative? It's got to have e to the 4x in it, right? But I've got to put that 1 fourth out front because notice that 4 times 1 fourth would give me, in the end, a coefficient of 1. Okay, you do the next two for me e to the negative 3x and e to the 1 half x, and then we'll check them. Okay, what do you have for B? Negative one-third e to the negative 3x. Why Why'd you put the negative out front? Because this was a coefficient of negative 3, so you had to put 1 over negative 3. Let's see. Okay, all right, this one's a little trickier. I know I have to have the e to the 1 half x. But then when I put 1 over 1 half, what does that really become? 2. Let's see. So 1 over 1 half. If I did keep, change, flip, that gives me 2. Or if I do 1 over 1 half, that's 2 over 1, which is 2. So either way, when you put that 1 over 1 half, it becomes a 2 in front. Okay, any questions on that? Okay, so what if I had three terms there? Well, I just do each one of them individually, and my answer is going to have three terms, then still the plus C. Okay, so 3x to the 5. Antiderivative is... What? 
x to the 6. Partially right. How oh, did you get one half? Okay, so you have 3x to the 6 divide by new exponent. Add 1 to exponent, divide by new exponent. In the next step, I'll make that 1 half. Okay, so do the next one. 7x squared, but what do I have to divide? Oops, that's not a 2. That becomes a 3, and I divide by 3. What about 8? 8x, and then plus c. Mm -hmm. So then I would definitely make this 1 half x to the 6 plus 7 thirds x cubed plus 8x plus c. What on earth am I going to do with b? If all three of those are over x, couldn't I just individually divide them all by x? Okay, this is what I would do for this one. I'm going to split this up into 4 over x plus 3x over x plus 2x to the 4 over x. So all three are divided by x, so I just split them up into three fractions. Now, I can't simplify this one, but how else could I write that that might make antiderivative easier. 4x to the negative 1. That does simplify to what? Plain old 3. And this simplifies to what? 2x cubed. And then we'll finally take the uh, antiderivative. Okay, so take each one of those terms and find the antiderivative for me. And then one of them should give you pause. Is one of them giving you trouble? Okay, what about this? If I add 1 to the exponent, what is my new exponent? 0. Okay, well, x to the 0 is 1. So how can I start with no x's and end up with x in the derivative? That doesn't make sense, does it? Okay, so this one's a little bit different. This one I actually would not rewrite. But I wanted you to rewrite it to see where the issue comes from. If you find yourself in this situation where, wait a minute, if I had 1, I get a 0. That doesn't make sense. That means that it has a special rule. Is 4 over x not the same as that? 4 times 1 over x. What's the antiderivative of 1 over x? Natural log. It'll just have a 4 in front of it. So, if you find yourself, I mean, 99% of the time I'd say, yes, change that to a negative exponent. But if you find that, oh, wait a minute, if I add 1, I get a 0, this, something is wrong, then you're in a natural log situation. Okay? So, for this one, I would leave it 4 over x, and then it becomes 4 natural log of x. It's the only one that that exponent will give you trouble. You'll hit a roadblock. Plus 3x plus, what is this last one? x to the fourth. And what's my coefficient? Yes, 2 over 4, which becomes 1 half x to the fourth. 
question. All right. Okay, so those are the notes. Um, I think what I want to do is just do yesterday's assignment for now. And then this antiderivative practice, we'll just do that kind of as a warm-up tomorrow. So for today, I want you to treat that as your assignment. Um, it's finding antiderivatives tomorrow we will work with finding the C in some cases when we'll actually find that number and then we'll actually get into what's just a little glimpse of what these are actually used for we just have to figure out how to manipulate them first